Hi, this is Forrest Woolman with the Electric Bike Report. So right now I'm going to talk to you about the Quiet Cat Jeep Rubicon, a heavy-duty all-terrain e-bike that's suitable for hunters, anglers, and overlanders looking to explore. Now at first glance, the Quiet Cat Jeep Rubicon looks like just a fat tire monster e-bike ready to go where other e-bikes have gone before and decorated with its emblematic army green color. It looks like it's ready for battle. So this bike dons a powerful 1,000 watt motor and has quality full suspension to tackle whatever terrain you take it on. Looking at a big picture, this e-bike will definitely take you on journeys you never before thought were possible. This e-bike is suitable, like I said, for hunters who need to sneak in and carry their game out, for anglers who want to avoid long walks in the wilderness carrying their catch, and adventurers seeking solace in remote places without having to carry all their gear to their favorite spot. When you climb aboard and tame this Rubicon beast to your bequest, you will quickly discover an electric bike like no other. So keep watching and you too will discover what makes this e-bike so thrilling. Now before I begin, please take a moment to consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell on your screen. Doing so helps support our channel, which enables us to bring in more bikes to test and review, and it will let you know of any future videos we post featuring more e-bike content that you would like. So like its namesake in the four-wheel drive world, the Quiet Cat Jeep Rubicon electric bike is designed to dominate the wilderness in which it roams. Equipped with the 1000 watt Bafung mid-drive motor, 26 inch by 4.8 inch all-terrain tubeless tires, and a 21 amp hour battery for longer range, this bike really is built for battle. The powerful mid-drive motor produces tons of torque to take you up hills and tow the heavy gear across the wilderness. The controller function features a dual mode system that gives you 10 pedal assist levels to work with using two separate modes, the eco mode for slower average pace and the sport mode for when you need maximum power output. Smoothing the rough roads is the fire link suspension featuring forks and shock from rock shocks and suitable stopping powers from the Tektro brakes. And topping off the list of goodies is the lifetime warranty that you get on the frame. So I've only touched on a few things about this Tamer of the Wild e-bike. Now we'll look at some key specs. So packing a heavy punch in power, like I said before, is this 1000 watt Bafung mid-drive motor had me tearing up hills at a peak torque of 160 Newton meters. This bike can haul up to 125 pounds of cargo on one of the three optional trailers, a little bit more on that later, and can carry rider and cargo of 300 pounds on the bike. Now delivering energy to the motor is the 48 volt, 21 amp hour battery integrated inside the frame. The pedal assist has two modes, eco mode for slower riding and sport mode, like I mentioned before, for maximum output riding. And each has its own pedal assist of one to five, giving you 10 levels total. This gives you a range of between 25 and 46 miles based on our testing. Now the Firelink front suspension uses a QK inverted fork with 140 millimeters of travel and lockouts for when you're carrying cargo and need to eliminate the bounce that your pedaling causes on the suspension. This bike rolls on 26 by 4.6 CST all-terrain tires, which makes steering easy on the toughest terrain along with absorbing the bumps. The RockShock Monarch RL rear monoshock has 150 millimeters of wheel travel and it worked really well with these fat tires in helping me keep control while I thumped over some big bumps and loose rocks. Basically, I rode this bike over terrain that would have required a kidney belt on other bikes. That's how well the Rubicon rides. Now, giving this bike a good range of gears was the SRAM 9-speed. Whether I needed an easy to pedal low gear for climbing hills or wanted top speed to race across the flat desert or any gear in between, the SRAM shifted really well. Word of caution though, since the chain transmits the power to the rear hub, be sure to always downshift when slowing and coming to a stop. The mid-drive motor 
makes this bike more like a motorcycle because of the direct power that's being distributed from the motor through the chain. So when upshifting, it may be tempting to skip gears from, from like fourth gear to maybe eighth gear, but only do one gear at a time. The torque from the mid-drive motor will wear out the chain and smaller rear cogs quicker if you start and stop from higher gears. Now let's talk about the frame for a second. It's Burley 6061 aluminum alloy, and it comes in three sizes, which is unusual when you talk about e-bikes. You can get one in small, medium, or large. So that way it's easy for you to get the frame size that works best for your height and your riding ability. Weighing in at 75 pounds, this bike really isn't that heavy when compared to other all-terrain bikes. I found the lightweight to be a real asset when rumbling over moguls, across ditches, along loose rock, and when climbing hills. This bike is super light when you compare it to a gasoline-powered dirt bike. And it had the power and zing to dart me around the desert like I was on a souped-up 125, which was really cool. Also cool is how quiet this bike rides, especially compared to a motorcycle. Hunters will appreciate that, and they also appreciate that they're not leaving a gasoline scent on the trail, too. This heavy-duty bike can handle heavy-duty work. And carrying a rider and gear of 300 pounds and up to 135 pounds of towing capacity. If you also pick up the optional trailer for carrying your catch. Now, QuietCat offers three trailer kits. The Hunter trailer, it's a twin 20-inch fat tire rig, which gives you 47 inches by 18 inches of open trailer space. It has a 45-degree angle pitch on how it sits on the ground. That makes it easier for you to lift up as you grab the lift handle to hook the trailer up to the bike after you load it. The Angler trailer has a single axle, one 20 inch by four inch wheel, and a cage design that helps you carry an ice box that you can put your fish in. And then there's the Overlander trail, which uses the same mono shock trailer as the Angler, minus the ice box, and instead has pannier racks for carrying additional goodies for the Outback. The frame design of this bike provided more of an upright position for me to ride rather than a more slumped over posture for aggressive riding like I'm on a mountain bike. That makes sense because the Rubicon is tuned more as a utility bike than as a racer. Stay tuned to our, our site for more details on this bike's sporty little cousin, the Ranger. The saddle wasn't comfortable for my tush on long rides, uh, but most riders are probably gonna be okay with that saddle. The rest of our team was. I just, I'm not good with a lot of saddles. But if you're okay, I'm sorry, if you're like me, then you might wanna consider adding a gel cover for sitting on top of this for long rides. The brakes, again, Tektro, four piston caliper brakes. We usually see two kit piston, not four piston on these bikes. So that's good quality. And they worked great for the off-roading work that I did on this bike. And we'll show you a little bit on the brake test results in a, in a minute or two. The cockpit setup, handlebar, good width, grips, good action, brake levers worked real good. And the controls were easy to manipulate and easy to operate the bike. Left thumb throttle, easy to actuate. And, uh, but one thing we would like to see next time is for Quiet Cat to offer protectors uh, for the levers because on this kind of bike, you might lay it down or the handlebars might hit a tree when you're riding. That means you could have a bent lever or a broken lever and uh, that would make it more difficult to ride and less fun for sure. So finally, like I said, I like the rubber gips. They provided really good control. I had wet hands, wet gloves, and still these were good, easy to grip, and they never loosened up on this bike, and I took it over some really tough terrain. So that pretty much covers the specs on the Quiet Cat Jeep Rubicon. Next up, we're going to go over the results on how well this bike performed in our riding performance tests. So e-bikes like the Quiet Cat Jeep Rubicon can travel at a pretty fast speed. So we like to make sure the braking is up to the task of stopping the rider in a hurry when needed. This is why we perform a brake test. Here at EBR, we bring bikes up to 20 miles per hour before hitting the brakes and measuring the distance it takes to stop. We try to brake as quickly as we can while also maintaining control of the bike in a fashion similar to how the average rider would in a ride. We do this multiple times, at least three times, and then we take an average for the stopping distance. Now the takeaway on our test involves stopping on pavement this bike wasn't designed, nor really intended to be primarily ridden on paved roads. The Rubicon is made for the wilderness. Where other e-bikes are made to brake in traffic and brake for pedestrians, this bike's brake system is made to stop in the dirt for whatever Mother Earth throws in your way. 
The average stopping distance for this bike was 27 feet 10 inches, which is a little longer than the average, but that's comparing this bike to regular e-bikes that aren't made to tackle the terrain this bike owns. That's why this bike comes with the Tektro Dorado E730 disc brake with four piston calipers. Like I said, usually most of these bikes have two piston calipers. And the rotors, instead of 180 millimeter, they're 203 millimeter. And that makes this braking system even greater for the kind of work it has to do. And let's remember that this bike rides on big fat knobby tires designed for dirt, not pavement. So that's gonna be a difference there. My overall experience was that the brakes stopped me when I needed, it to, needed them to. Case in point, on one of my rides in the desert, I had an ATD, so it's right in front of me. We would have T-boned it if the brakes didn't engage the way they did. I think these brakes can work really well, and they did for me. Now, in order to gain a better sense of motor engagement with the pedaling process, we put all the bikes we review on a circuit test. The circuit test course is a one mile loop with a small 30 foot climb. We do multiple laps on this course starting with a lap with no motor assistance. Then one in each level of the pedal assist, in this case pedal assist one through five. So six laps total. With this we can see the speed profile of the bike and get a sense of how well the motor engages with the rider. The takeaway is unique to this bike is that with two separate pedal assist modes, the Eco and the Sport. We had to not do one round of PAS 1 to 5, but we had to do two. So that meant we had to do 11 laps around this track. As the name implies, Eco PAS 1, five, one through 5 levels are for when you want to conserve battery consumption. You're not going to go as fast, but you're not going to use up as much battery power too. Whereas the Sport PAS levels, they're more for aggressive riding. You're going to use more battery in that case too. So we normally do up to six laps on the circuit test, but like I said, with the two modes, we had to do 11 laps. Um, one lap was, of course, for no motor, and 10 laps for each of the PAS level for each mode. The results on the chart you're seeing give the breakdown. And as you might expect, it was no picnic pedaling the 75-pound beast around the first lap with no pedal assist. It never is on a bike like this. But no one buys this bike to pedal it with no power, right? But when you turn on the power and click into PAS1, you really notice and appreciate the pedal assist. I did. The speed increase at each PAS level is pretty balanced at about two miles per hour per level increase. Now, one thing you want to think about when you click into PAS5, the bike really takes off faster, topping out at close to 20 miles per hour in eco mode and 26 miles per hour in sport mode. So you want to be aware of that. The Rubicon uses a torque sensor instead of a cadence sensor because, again, it's a mid-drive motor. It's got to have a torque sensor. And it, it determines a good amount for the power output during the ride. The torque sensor makes the ride easier because it can tell when you're pedaling harder, like up hills, rather than simply counting the cycling in your pedaling, as cadence sensors do. The torque sensor also helps the motor economize on power usage. It doesn't overpower the motor, which is a problem rear hub motors have. Our consensus with this motor is that it delivers on speed and power regardless of the mode or PAS level you're in. The trick for you, the rider, is to determine just how much power you need and when so this bike will meet your riding needs. Now two of the most common questions we get about specific e-bike is how far does it go and how well does it do on hills? Now I'll cover the hill climbing question in a minute, but first I'm going to talk to you about this bike's battery range. To determine how far an e-bike can go using power from the battery, we perform two separate range tests. In the first test, we use the highest pedal assistance setting, PAS5, and on the second, we use the lowest assistance setting, which in this case is PAS1. And this establishes a real-world value on how far this e-bike will take you. Quiet Cat thought about how important battery conservation is with this bike. So they created two separate modes, like I mentioned earlier, for the PAS, the Eco mode and the Sport mode. Now, that meant we have two, we have 10 different PAS levels, and we had a little bit more testing to do. As you, might for, as you might figure, instead of doing two range tests, we had to do four, the high and low PAS in the Eco mode and the high and low PAS test in the Sport mode. With all the testing we did, there were some variances, but our final conclusion is the battery should give you enough energy to ride somewhere between 25 to 46 miles on a single charge. Now thinking about the intended use 
for excursions like hunting, fishing, and off-road recreation, that's probably the furthest you're gonna to wanna to ride before stopping to get a recharge for yourself and for the bike. If for whatever reason that doesn't sound like enough battery for you, Quiet Cat sells pretty cool accessory. If you ride predominantly in eco mode, you'll go the furthest and you'll still go plenty fast. You can also alter the speed settings to lower the top speed lower, which will help conserve battery too. That means you can make a definite impact on your range, depending how far you go and before you reach the next AC outlet. One last note, if you're a hardy outdoors person and you want to use this bike for multi-day distance stops, you want to get a second battery, or you can get the optional solar panels and recharge unit that Quiet Cat offers. Your Rubicon's battery can get a full recharge in about six to eight hours from the sun. Now back to the other common question we get about e-bikes. How well does it do on the hills? We were curious to see how the Rubicon's 1,000 watt monster of a motor climbs steeper hills, and we were eager to see how it did on our hill test. Our hill climb test really pushes test bikes to the limit using one of the highest hills around, Utah's own Hellhole Trail. This trail is a third of a mile long, has an average grade of 12%, and is probably longer and steeper than any hill that's regular, regularly faced by the average commuter. But this te test really helps us answer the question about an e-bike's climbing ability. We do this test in two parts. The first test, our tester used a throttle only with no pedaling, and in the second test, he did basic pedaling and PAS5 in sport mode. We expected to see the Rubicon shine on this test and shine it did. On the throttle test, our test rider, Justin, made it to the top in 92 seconds at an average speed of 14.3 miles per hour. On the PAS5 test, Justin got this bike to the top in 63 seconds at an average speed of 16.5 miles per hour. Both are excellent results for an e-bike of this caliber. One thing to remember is that mid-drive motors, which this bike has, rely heavily on pedaling. Some bikes we tested with mid-drive motors didn't even make it to the top of the hill in the throttle test, but this bike did. Another important thing to remember when thinking about the bike's power is that it's a workhorse, not a cheetah. We appreciated this bike more from that perspective, and we think you will too. So after riding this bike close to 230 miles and spending up to 32 hours working on it and with it, we have the opinion that QuietCat has found their niche in the e-bike world, producing a fun, strong, reliable, and excellent off-road e-bike, such as this one, the Rubicon. The consensus among all our test riders here at Electric Bike Report is that the QuietCat Jeep Rubicon is a great off-road e-bike. The mid-drive motor is great for and is a great fit for active riders who want to pedal consistently. One setback with this bike is the fact that it has a 1,000 watt motor, which means you'll need to check with your local jurisdiction about their e-bike rules. You might have to adjust the PAS settings. It depends. This bike is made for riders who want to venture out in the forest, deserts, and other wide open areas outdoors for outdoor activities like hunting, fishing, and exploring. Quiet Cat has some great accessory trailers you want to remember to help you carry bulky items like the trailers we talked about before. An important thing you also want to remember is when you ride the Rubicon, and since this is a mid-drive motor, you need to remember downshift gears when you slow down and stop, like on a motorcycle, because if you start out in a high gear, that high torque will wear out the chain and the rear cassette faster. Also, when upshifting to prevent wear on the chain and cassette, good idea if you shift one gear at a time. In the meantime, enjoy. This bike will take you on a ride of your life. So thanks for watching our review of the Quiet Cat Jeep Rubicon. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, then please click like. If you're not currently a subscriber to our channel, then please subscribe. It really helps us get the word out to others about e-bikes. And to check current pricing for this e-bike, there's a check best price link that you can click below. Also, be sure to click the link to our in-depth written review. It has details I mentioned today, plus a lot more important stuff. So that's it for now. I'm Forrest Woolman with Electric Bike Report. Thanks for watching. I look forward to hopefully seeing you out there on the trail sometime. And please, please remember, keep your hands on the bar, your feet on the pedals, and your eyes on the road. And I'll see you next time here on the Electric Bike Report.